I don't know what that was all about. Let's try that again. What the hell? How can someone be out of practice with talking? It's like talking. Like, okay. I'm out of practice talking. Hashtag practice not magic. All right. Hey, hey, party people. I'm back. And today we're going to have a good old fashioned book review video because I got so many questions on book recommendations while I was on hiatus. And uh, just a couple of quick things before I start talking about these specific books. Number one, the titles and author names for these books are in the description box below. So go look them up if you feel like buying any of these. Number two, I have a lot of other book review videos and if you wanna watch those, I have them in a handy dandy playlist. Link will also be in the description box. Now, if you wanna see all of my book recommendations, they are in a handy dandy list at amazon.com slash shop slash Zoe Hong. Yes, that is an affiliate link, which means I do make a tiny bit of money if you shop through that storefront, um, but it, they don't raise the price for you or anything. If you hate Amazon and don't want to shop on Amazon and you just want to take that information and shop somewhere else, that's fine by me too. But it's just like an easy place to put all the information somewhere. So all my book recommendations are there. Link is in the description box below. All my book recommendations are there. All of my art supply recommendations are there. So go check out that link. Okay. And number three, number four, number three, what are we on? No, that's it. That's all the information. That's, I think that's it. Let's talk about these books. First up is Draping the Complete Course, and it includes 40 video tutorials, and I watched the videos, and they're great. They're straightforward. They're really clear instructions, uh, draping on the form and transferring the drape to pattern. And, you know, uh, she tackles even draping sleeves, which is not something everyone does or is good at. And she mentions this in the book that you should go through the book like it is a class where, um, you know, beginning to end and not bounce around too much unless you're a little bit more advanced because she does go over simpler things like what a French start is and how to drape a French start all the way to really complex ball gowns and things towards the end. The instructions are extremely thorough like the in the beginning especially where she goes over like block skirts and block bodices and she goes step by step. She includes how much muslin you need for the drape, how to pin, you know, how to mark, how to remove the muslin from the form and how to transfer it to a paper pattern. I do wish the pattern pictures, the pattern making pictures were a little bit bigger and clearer. Like the contrast is up on my camera so you can see them a little bit more easily than the straight up book, but you can still see everything. Tons of clear instructions, detailed. Yeah, in the beginning basic one, she goes over, you know, how to transfer it to paper, how to do the pattern, how to finish the pattern, and then do another muslin cut so you can fit it and then make corrections and then you know, make those corrections onto your pattern. So, you know, she shows you the whole process on a few pieces in the beginning. And then as you get to more complicated pieces, you know, it's like if you were in a class and you already knew the instructions from the beginning, you don't need every single little detail. You don't need to have more instructions on how to true the skirt, you know, things like that, right? And so, yeah, I do recommend that if you do pick up this book, and yes, I do recommend this book, highly recommend this book for anyone interested in draping, uh, that you do as she says, and don't like go to the back and be like, oh, I want to drape this fancy ball gown, unless you have some draping experience to go and look at some of the really intense detailed pieces in the front, the beginning ones where she goes step by step, and then try to tackle some of the more intermediate ones in the middle, and then so forth and so forth. But this is a really great book. Tons of pictures, tons of detailed instructions. Um, do scan the QR code with your phone and check out the videos. 
personally, I scanned it with my phone and then I copied the link to my desktop so I could see the videos uh, bigger. And yeah, very good videos. Highly recommend this book. This book, Designing with Color Concepts and Applications, has long been my go-to color theory book recommendation. I used to teach with this book in university. For some reason, you know, the the price fluctuations on this book um, have made me look for other color theory book options for you, my lovely subscribers. And so I decided to check out this new book. And this is uh, the color workbook. It's um, it, the beginning third or so of the book goes over color theory and it has a very interesting take on it. it uh, the, um, the author has 10 rules for color and goes over in each chapter what each rule means and what role color serves in design. And then the last like half to two thirds of the book are mostly case studies where they discuss different designers and how they use color in their work. Uh, first of all, there's not any, hardly any fashion design references for this to be a useful book for fashion students, fashion designers. Uh, a lot of it is like poster art, product design, graphics. So if you're in those realms, then you might find this book helpful. Um, yeah, that first bit, it is helpful, but you know, almost two thirds of the book are just, hey, this is this graphic design firm in London and this is how they use color. And not everyone learns well that way and it wasn't really academic enough for me to feel like my students were going to get a lot from these kinds of case studies. You know, maybe if you're in graphic design or, you know, poster art, illustration, this, you know, you might be interested in this book, but I wouldn't recommend it for my fashion students. And um, honestly, a book called Color Design Workbook, I thought there would be like applicable assignments, something like workbooky, <laughs> I don't know. But there's no assignments, there's no here's how to study this and why don't you try this and there's no application behind it. And you know, my teaching style has always been theory and then practical application. Like theory doesn't mean much unless you can teach practical application. So for those reasons, I'm out. This is a book all about sewing jeans. The whole book is only about how to sew a pair of jeans, how to make a pair of jeans. And it's great. It's very thorough. It goes step by step in order of how to create your very own pair of jeans at home with a home sewing machine. This is also really good, I think, for people who want to be a fashion designer that specializes in jeans or includes jeans in their lineup, but doesn't really understand the construction of it very much. Because just reading this book and all of its sections on fabrics and fit and how, you know, if you place pockets strategically, the butt looks rounder, the butt looks smaller, the butt looks bigger, you know, all these things. And, you know, the, like all these things are so helpful to fashion designers who want to design and produce jeans that even if you yourself, you don't want to sew any jeans, but you want to know more about jeans to design them. I think this is a good book even for that because there's just a lot of information. It's like a straight up deep dive into denim jeans. Highly recommend. Highly recommend for anyone interested in jeans, jeans construction, all that good stuff. Highly recommend. This book is fast fit, easy pattern alterations for every figure. And I get a lot of, I get some requests for, you know, how do you fix patterns to fit bodies better? things like that. And so I'm on the prowl for a good fitting book. This book 
is for a very specific kind of person. This book is for people who sew clothes for themselves or, you know, for their sister, their daughter, you know, like one-off pieces for, you know, people they love or people whose business is just straight up single client made to order custom clothing. Okay. This isn't really a great book for the average fashion designer who works in bulk production, whether that's direct to consumer or wholesale. Okay. Because this book is very good in what it does. It takes a single fit issue like narrow backs, uh, thick arms, you know, thick calves, and it goes step by step into how to fix those problems in the pattern. And it shows how they fix the pattern to accommodate these fit issues. And they use a commercial pattern for this. It really doesn't matter because it's really about how they altered it, where they added length or width, and where they took some out to address these fit issues. And it goes over a lot of different fit issues. But, you know, most of the time, if you are doing fittings for production, like you are a fashion designer for a house and you're doing fittings, then you look at something and you see a ripple somewhere. You're not exactly where that's coming from. And so that's not what that book is. Like some fitting books, they'll be like, well, if you have rippling across the shoulder, then that means this. And then they'll tell you what it means and how to fix it. This is the reverse. It's like if a person has square shoulders, then this is how you change the pattern to accommodate that, right? And so, I mean, I guess you could reverse engineer the knowledge. So if you're really interested in deep diving fit, you can read this and take notes and take the knowledge and take it with you to address other pro types of projects and stuff. But this is really for the private client sort of work. But it is very good for that. It's a very thorough, it just, it really gets deep into details about how to fix a whole litany of fit issues. This book, I don't know, like, I mean, I didn't ask, so I don't know the exact purpose of this book, but when I started going through this book, I thought that this was a perfect book for people who don't know how to sew to learn construction. Because this book, they go through a lot of different basic clothes like cargo pants and tank tops and a double breasted blazer and you know like a parka like all these basic clothes right and they deep dive into how it's constructed how where you place seams why what kind of seams where binding goes the flats are really good it it shows so many close up drawings of what the proper construction of a tank top should look like, what the proper construction of a basic button-down Oxford shirt should look like, you know, all these basic bodies, you know, and, you know, you have to learn construction somehow, okay? Especially those of you who didn't go to fashion school, don't want to go to fashion school, that's fine. You, have, you don't have to learn how to sew beautifully, but you have to understand how clothes are made and how they should be put together before you decide to spread your design wings and start doing more experimental things. You got to walk before you run, basically. And this book is so good at teaching you how to walk. Like, look at all these detailed drawings showing you this is where you need to put some binding and this is the all the pieces of the collar and this is a patch pocket and it should be sewn like this and you know you should put a box pleat in the back there so that when guys want to move their arms it, can, it has a little give back there and you know all these things yokes are two layers etc etc and it shows the cross sections of all the seams so that you get a basic idea of how to put these garments together without you personally learning how to sew. And I think that this book is really good for that. I got a lot of requests for menswear specific books. So let's get into it. So I have two pattern making books specifically more for menswear here. And um, I'm gonna do a little compare contrast because 
frankly, they're both really good. Okay, they both have sections on how to measure bodies. Of course, they're done in different ways, and what measurements you need, basic size charts for, you know, basic men's clothing and bodies, you know, just the generals, as all pattern making books do. And then they each have a section on how to create slopers or blocks, like the basic fit of the body so that you can build your styles off of them. So you're not creating a pattern from scratch every single time you do a pant, but you take your basic pant sloper and then you make it smaller to get like a tight fit jean and make it a little bit looser to do like a khaki, you know, trouser sort of style, right? So of course it goes through your blocks, you know, and every pattern making book also has like, here are your tools. Here are the basic principles of pattern making how it works with the body, you know, things like that. And then this one, the white book, I'm just going to call them the white book and the blue book for ease of reference. It goes into all these different styles of shirts, of jackets, of pants, and how to draft the patterns. And, you know, each one starts with the block. And then it shows in red the the corrections it makes to continue creating this pattern. And then it's written, the directions are written out. The blue pictures are what the finished pattern should look like. And it shows all the pieces, all the collar, collar stand, under collar, pockets, facing, sleeves, and then it has a muslin of the finished piece. And here's a long sleeve shirt. It goes, here's what we did first. We adjusted the shoulder follow the red lines, and then we added darts, follow the red lines, very detailed instructions on how to put together a button-down shirt, you know, and it's really easy to follow because you just follow the red lines, the blue patterns again are what the final pattern should look like, the grain lines are on there, where you should place the notches are on there, and here's the collar, how to take the measurements from your neck, and then um, create your collar with the precise measurements. Collar under collar, collar stand. Let's take a look at this blue book now. And, you know, again, it has all the same things. It has how to measure the body, the size charts. They have a page on kind of abbreviations on how to read their instructions because they do not get as detailed in words on the instructions. Their instructions are a little bit more abbreviated. So do bookmark that abbreviations and symbol key uh, to get you going on using this pattern book. And so they go over how to measure bodies. Something the white book doesn't have, but the blue book does have that's nice is how to, you know, they have their section on basic slopers. They have a section on how to do some basic pattern corrections for fit. It's not super deep divey, but just kind of basic like, well, if the crotch does this, and if the, if the chest ripples across like this, you know, they do some basic ones on how to correct the pattern for that. And I find those kinds of things extremely helpful. And this one, it has a whole section on different parts, like there's a whole section on necklines, a whole section on sleeves, and a whole section on different collars. Um, before it goes into, this is a chapter on jackets, and this is a chapter on shirts, and this is a chapter on knits, you know? Whereas in the white book, they don't have a separate section for here are all the necklines and here are all the collars. They just go into, this section is on shirts and this section is on pants. So as I mentioned before, I like both the white book and the blue book, okay? The white book, I highly recommend for people who are brand new to pattern making, men's or women's, because the instructions are really, like, really detailed and clear. And I think that the whole, like, adding red lines to the black line drawings and then showing things in multiple steps and how they lay that out and how they do that is really good for beginners to have all the extra information that they need. And it's really straightforward. I mean, it doesn't have as many styles as the blue book, but it's like, here are 101 direct, very specific instructions for how to draft a pattern for a double-breasted men's blazer. 
and it includes the lining. It includes the lining for several jackets, which is not common in a lot of pattern making books. Like the blue book, it only shows the suit lining for a suit jacket and that's it. But the white book shows uh, the lining patterns for several jackets. And I find that incredibly useful because lining is this thing that a lot of teachers for some reason don't talk about enough and then linings I think can really ruin a jacket if not done right. I think the blue book is for people maybe who have some experience with pattern making like maybe they've done a lot of women's wear patterns and so like making the leap into menswear is not as hard for them it's really more about the shapes and not the instructions of pattern making and they want and people who want more styles, you know, more like, and then they have that section on like different collars and sleeves so that they can kind of design on their own. It's not really about how to place entire garments together. And so because it has all those options, you know, I would recommend the blue book for someone who doesn't need like the absolute basics, but wants more style options for pattern making. It's a longer book. There's more pages. There's more styles. Um, but it's, and not to say beginners can't use the blue book, I just think that um, the white book is easier for beginners, okay? And if you're a little bit worried about how well you're gonna do a pattern making, um, I recommend the white book. But honestly, I appreciate both books very much and I recommend them for different groups as I said. So, um, yeah, you're going to have to make up your own mind depending on your own skill set. Last but not least is I just wanted to throw in this gorgeous bit of eye candy. The Terry Mugler fashion fetish fantasy picture book. There's no text. There's no biography of his life or anything. But it's just the actual Terry Mugler's pictures of when he was at the house and shots from the runway, shots of his advertising and some editorials. It's just a pretty book if this is your style, okay? It's, it's a beautiful coffee table book. It's hefty, but not 100 pounds like some of those fashion books can be. But it's just pretty. Oh, by the way, I'm trying to get to Paris maybe in the spring because I mean, for a lot of reasons. I've been trying to go to Paris since 2018 and life keeps throwing roadblocks at me. But there is a Terry Mugler retrospective happening in Paris, uh, October to April. So October of 2021 to April of 2022. I'm gonna drop a link to the article where I found this information uh, in the description box below. But yeah, I'm trying to go to Paris next spring so that I may see this and also maybe go to Premier Vision, maybe also have a YouTube meetup because I would love to meet my Parisian followers. I think that would be so fun. So yeah. And that's it for today. Please give this video and that's it for today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today, if you enjoyed this information about these books, if you just enjoyed watching me ramble because Listen, I didn't know this was gonna be a thing when I started my channel, but there are a lot of comments where they're like, I don't uh, give a crap about fashion or anything like that, but I just like listening to you talk about stuff. <laughs> so please give this video a thumbs up, drop me a comment, say hi. I have missed chit-chatting with all y'all about all things fashion. And please share this video with anyone interested in fashion and art and garment construction books. Um, subscribe. If you haven't already, hit that notification bell. New videos are, as usual, every first and third Tuesday of the month. So keep that in mind. Mark that on your calendars or just hit the notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video.